In this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can add these speed lines into your game and use them in your sprint systems, wind effects, car systems, etc, etc. So making these speed lines, we actually don't use anything with GUIs. We actually use particle emitters. So using this part, we are going to make it follow our camera and these are the speed lines. So we're basically going to position the part on our camera and it would kind of look something like this. The first link in the description is to get this model with the particle in it for completely free. So the first thing we are going to be doing is getting run service. The next thing we obviously need the camera so we can attach the part to our camera. So game.workspace.currentcamera. And then we are going to get our speed lines wherever it is at in your game. I put my part in replicated storage. So game dot replicated storage wait for child speed lines. Now we are going to get the player and the character and the humanoid. All three of those you guys will see in just a second. So we're going to get the player game dot players dot local player get the character which is player dot character or player dot character added colon wait just in case it had it loaded in time this is an extra security check and then we are just going to get our humanoid which is character with our child humanoid so we make sure it's actually there now we can define some utilities which would be the speed and also we are getting a rate so the speed will obviously be the speed of the speed lines and the rate is the amount of speed lines so we're going to set our speed to 20 so for ray i think 1500 is a good number and then to constantly keep updating the position of the part we are going to use run service dot render stepped and later on when i put this in a module i'll put this in a run service bind to render step event to make it a little bit easier but for right now we're going to say run service dot render step connect function so the first thing we are going to do in render step is get viewport size from our camera so viewport size will be equal to camera dot viewport size and the next few things i'll define i'll explain in just a second we are also going to get the aspect ratio, which is viewport size dot X divided by viewport size dot Y. And then we're going to get an offset of 10, which you guys could probably put up here. I don't know why I put it. I forgot to put it um, up here, but you guys can put offset right here. And so this next thing is if aspect ratio is greater than 1.5, then we are going to set the offset to 10 else offset will be equal to 13 and what the point of this is on ipads or other tablet devices the speed lines are a little bit taller and you can't see them as good because you know tablets and ipads you know they have a taller screen size so this is making sure that the speed lines look good on all tablets all devices everything like that so you can basically still see them just as good on any other device. So the next thing is positioning the speed line. So speed lines dot C frame will be equal to camera dot C frame. And then we are going to uh, add it by camera dot C frame dot look vector multiplied by offset divided by camera dot field of view divided by 70. Now, you guys would want to get rid of the 70 with your field of view, or whatever the default is in your game, but the default for Roblox is 70. So now that we've positioned it, we can set the rate of our speed line. So speed lines dot attachment dot particle emitter dot rate will be equal to the humanoids walk speed so this is what i was talking about from earlier we're going to use the humanoids walk speed to kind of help decide the rate of our particles and we're going to divide that by the speed and then multiply it by the rate and then we are going to set the parent of the speed lines to our camera 
now that we are in our game you can see our speed lines are working and it is constantly updating to our camera's position and everything works nicely and even on ipads like i was talking about earlier it still looks nice even with the taller screens and so the next thing i'm going to do is put this in a module so it helps us manage it in our games and if i'm being honest it's really not that hard so firstly we obviously need a module script so in replicated storage i'm going to insert a module script and probably the easiest thing we can do first is copying over our variables i really like to organize my stuff with these quotes saying services and whatever whatnot and the only service we really get in here is run service we're just going to get that right away and then we can start defining our variables that we can copy over and now that i'm looking at it i think getting the aspect ratio and the viewport size every render step was a little overkill so we're just going to define it once and yeah that's the only time we're going to define it there now we can start writing our function so we're going to say function module dot start and then this is going to take our rate that we can always put in a custom rate and a speed and both of these things are numbers now we are going to firstly do some security checks like making sure if the camera is there so we're going to say if not camera then we're going to return same thing for rate and speed if the rate is nil then we're going to set the rate to the default 1500 and then if uh, speed is nil, then we're gonna set that to the default 20 as well. And so the next thing we are going to do is get our particle or our speed lines dot attachment dot particle emitter dot enabled is equal to true. Now by default, this will be false, but I'll get into more why we are doing this in just a second. And so the next thing we're gonna do is set these particles parent equal to the camera like we did before and then i'm going to define a new task dot spawn function that we can run right away and then get into our run service bind to render stepped speed lines and we are going to say enum dot render priority dot camera dot value and then start a function right here and now that i'm thinking about it we should probably check the aspect ratio before this even starts so we can do that right now by just getting the code and putting it right there and oh i think i also forgot the offset which is all good i can just define it right here offset we're just going to set the default of that to 10 and so then the only things we will be running every render step will be our c frame and our rate which we can just copy right over and get the same thing so humanoid and also our speed and our rate and then i also forgot to change speed lines to the particle just like this and so now i want to get into how we can actually stop the speed lines whenever we want so i'm going to make a new function function module dot stop and we are going to set run service and unbind from render stepped our speed lines. And then we are going to set the particles position. Now, the reason I am doing it like this, where I'm setting it to itself minus vector 3.new, is because if we were to just stop enabling it, setting it the enable property to false, it will actually take a little bit for it to actually stop the particle to stop so i'm setting the particles position to hopefully be under the map so we actually don't see it and i'll give you guys an example just in a second and then the last thing we're going to do is set the particles uh a particle emitter enabled to false and so now back in our local script we're going to get the speed lines module and then speed lines module dot start and if we leave these nil it'll automatically default to our numbers that we defined here of 1520 so now when we join our game you can see that it is working perfectly fine 
and so if we wanted it to stop after a while or doing a certain action stops it we can say task.wait we're going to wait five seconds and then say speedlines module dot stop and so going into our game we still have them and then after a few seconds as you can see we no longer have them so to help show off what i was saying earlier by getting rid of this and not setting the position and then going into our game and letting the particles go and after a few seconds you will see that they are actually still there when we move our camera so that is why we are setting the position to be under the map so we don't see that at all and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace